Hello and welcome to Impact Yobi, your weekly roundup of news and activities in the pride of the Sahel. My name is Femi Akonde. Thank you for joining us. Hundreds of indigents, vulnerable and less privileged persons are set to benefit from food items donated by the Northeast Development Commission to the Yobe State Government. This is part of its humanitarian interventions to cushion the hardship faced by targeted beneficiaries in the Northeast. TVC News correspondent Michael Oshoma has details in this report. This visit by officials of the Northeast Development Commission to Yobe State is to lend support to the state government in this trying period caused by the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. Items donated are two ambulances, bags of rice and maize, gallons of vegetable oil, cartons of tomato paste, packets of seasoning, salt, and cartons of spaghetti. The managing director of the Northeast Development Commission, Mohamed Goni Akali, is represented by the executive director of supply and finance at this event. He says the gesture is in fulfillment of the mandate of the commission, especially in this lockdown period. The principal mandate of the commission is to assist the IDPs and the vulnerable. Uh, like the different government have said, initially we are to deal with the issue of Boko Haram and IDPs. The COVID-19 has also ravaged this nation and then we feel that people have lost a lot of time and money so the little assistance will come from the NDC will be of help. The deputy governor who represented his principal assured the leadership of the commission of fairness in the distribution process. The, the stakeholders in the local government are responsible for ensuring distribution at the local government level to the wards and to the units. And equally all palliative measures that are being given to the state government, the same channel rules of distribution will be followed inshallah. The palliatives donated by the North East Development Commission is targeted at the less privileged, vulnerable persons and the aged across the 17 local government areas in Yube State. Michael Oshoma. The Yobe State Executive Council, under the leadership of Governor May Malabuni, has approved new contracts and ratified orders in order to develop the state and the well being of the people. The council approved more than 15 billion naira for the construction of 3,600 housing units across the state and more than 1 billion naira for the supply of Hama buses for the Yobe State Transport Services Limited. Commissioners briefed journalists on the outcome of the meeting. The state and the well-being of the people of the state were discussed. The meeting also approved new contracts and ratified others. And the Munara administration continues to move the state forward despite prevailing economic and fiscal challenges. Uh, some of these uh, contracts that have been approved include one, the council approved the total sum of 15 billion 957 million 202,322 naira for the construction of 3,600 housing units across the state. Council also ratified the sum of 1,086,875,000 for the supply of 50 Toyota years Hammer buses for the Yobe Transport Services Limited, Dama 2. Council ratified the sum of 273 million 582,463 Naira and 50 Kobo and 136 million Naira respectively for the construction of one kilometer of road and two kilometers of concrete drains that link Obasanjo Estate here in Dematru with Malum Matari Wat and also for the raising of three million seedlings and rehabilitation of three nurseries at Unguru, Geshu and Baimari respectively. For the construction of these houses well, even if it is not up to Edmonds, it has taken quite a long time. But at that time, all the necessary procurement processes have not been completed. So this delay came in. 
And you know the process of public procurement in this country and in this state, as at now, has a lot of insecurities which have to be ironed out. And it was at this time that we were able to get this ironed out, and 50% of the loan released to us just about one or two months ago. So on the part, on the issue of the shape of the project, I think we are on course, and by next week we will be inviting our contractors to sign the contract agreements and so on. A lot of efforts has been put in place, and uh, when it comes to management, sometimes we find it uh, uh, difficult to have uh, everything done successfully. Uh, but this time around, the approach is, is different. The different approach we are putting in place here is that uh, we are uh, directed by His Excellency because of the interest he has in making sure that we provide, we protect our desert and uh, improve our lands for agricultural purposes. Uh, we have to plant or raise five, three million seedling for 2020 planting season. Here, we are now working uh, seriously to make sure that these three million seedlings are raised and uh, at the same time are uh, distributed accordingly. And uh, how to distribute and manage it, we, the approach is we are establishing 100 hectares of land, I mean of uh, plantation in each, uh, in each of the three geopolitical, uh, three senatorial districts. And um, the 100 hectares, the way we want to manage is that uh, first, it will be managed by the Minister of Environment for at least one year. Well, drivers that can handle these buses, um, yes, because um, this is an MOU between the UB line and a company based in Abuja on a term of resettlement of three years. The reason behind this was it's over 10 years now, UB line I was not able to get supplies of buses. And also, this will go a long way in job creation and also improve the level of the state internal generated revenue and also to ease the transportation hardship of our people. All measures has been taken, has been put in place to train these drivers and also to make them know that things have changed. Under the platform of the Bruni and Gubani Youth Empowerment Initiative, the Deputy Governor of Yobe State has empowered more than 150 youths in Damagum local government area of the state. Items given to the beneficiaries are tricycles, sewing and grinding machines, among other materials. Some of the beneficiaries applauds the state government for the great gesture. The Deputy Governor, who was represented, admonished the beneficiaries not to sell the equipment, noting that it would serve as a source of income to fend for their families rather than remain idle without a means of livelihood. This empowering material will be distributed to beneficiaries as part of our modest response to the persist appeal. His Excellency, Honorable Mayor Malak Bouni, the Executive Governor of Yobe State, on all political office holders, corporate bodies, and well to do to be helpful and generous to the uh, underprivileged people among us. I wish to strongly share the opinion of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Yobe State, that our people are likely hardworking citizens that require a little incentive or empowerment for them to be self reliant in managing their own lives. In spite of the numerous development challenges with, uh, uh, with regard to our land resources, the present administration of the State, under the responsive and exemplary leadership of His Excellency, Honorable Mayor Malab Buni, has demonstrated its commitment to empowerment and human capital development through training in French production for over 500 years. <laughs> This is the interview segment on Impact Yobi. Our guest is the man whose ministry is saddled with the responsibility of managing 
the financial resources in Yobe State. He is the Commissioner for Finance, Honorable Musa Mustafa. Welcome to the program, sir. Welcome. Mr. Yes. Femi Akande, you are welcome. Yeah. To Thank you very much. Let's start with payment of salaries. This is an issue in so many states of the Federation. Some are, are not even up to date. But what's the situation in Yobe State and how have you devised a means of making it easier for civil servants to get salaries, especially with the introduction of technology? For a long time now, Yobe State has been paying its uh, staff, uh, employees, salaries regularly. And uh, that has been the trend, and uh, that is what we have been doing right now. We face salaries. In fact, by 24-25 of every month, we face salaries to our civil staff and every, every month, each month. And uh, we have uh, a lot of you know, technologies that we use to improve, the, uh, to make things stable for us. Uh, for instance, we have a lot of uh, softwares, you know, that uh, we use in payments of salaries. And uh, this also help us in detecting maybe if uh, someone is uh, drawing maybe two salaries, you understand? So we can be able to detect and block one automatically. And uh, wherever you work, it will show us, we will detect and we will put it away. So issues of salary, and we don't have any backlog of salary. We don't have any ideas of salary. Every month we pay our salaries uh, steadily. What about those who have worked meritoriously to serve the state? Uh, at the end of their service, they get, they're supposed to be paid pensions and gratuities. This is also a challenge in some areas where people feel after putting in so much, they don't get that kind of... Um, in fact, here when I say salary, in fact, it means both pensions and gratuities because we don't even separate them. We, we, we tally them, we put them together and we pay them together at the same date. Uh, the only difference now is here. We are totally taking the totals. We say this is for salary, this is pensions, but we pay them together you know, at the uh, end of every month. We pay them together with fair pension regularly, every month. Nobody is uh, when this state is uh, one month pension. And even the gratuity, we pay them. Okay. And then let's talk about a minimum wage. You know, in some states, the organized labor and the state government have been at loggerheads over um, agreements or agreeing to pay the, the minimum wage. What's the situation in Yobe State? Uh, no, I, don't, I think it's different because His Excellency, you know, the executive governor has more made pronouncement in January, uh, mid-January, and uh, he said he promised the civil servant that he, in fact, he approved the payment of that new minimum wage. And uh, uh, there and then we swung into action and we fed that minimum wage by January. So this January we fed that uh, 30,000 minimum wage salary. Everybody knows they were you know, uh, happy. You know. So we fed that one. We fed, we fed. All right. Well, that's interesting. And then um, revenue generation is something that is also very important in funding the budget. Uh, how have you been able to ensure that um, you generate enough revenue to also complement what you get f uh, from the federal government to ensure that, yes, the state keeps running? Yeah, in terms of revenue, also we uh, put, in, we put in some uh, measures to see that uh, uh, we improve in terms of the revenue generations. Uh, honestly, you may be aware that the, our revenue generation level is, is quite low. But uh, now we are making frantic efforts to see how we can improve on that. In fact, uh, right now I'm in talks with uh, a particular consultant. We are talking uh, to see how we can improve uh, the revenue level of the state. Uh, also, without uh, you know, inflicting pains to our uh, you know, team population or our business people. Uh, you see how we would reconcile, how we, you know, increase the revenue level uh, still uh, without, uh, you know, implanting any uh, injury on our, you know, yeah, small businesses, uh, small businesses mm -hmm. yes, who we are trying to help. Mm -hmm. In many ways, we are trying to see how we will improve mm -hmm. their businesses and so mm -hmm. And then um, contracts, we see so many projects going on in Yobe State. And People are wondering how the state's government is doing so much when 
uh, we know that resources are scarce. How have you been able to manage all of these and also ensure that contractors get paid and deliver? The, honestly, you know, the financial <coughs> situation uh, is not, you know, it's not very sound. But here in New York State and in the Ministry of Finance here, we are very prudent in the management of these public finances. So that was one aspect. We are very, very prudent. We are very, very straightforward. Everything is open. In fact, here in this ministry, we don't make even famous. No one, we don't pay any contractor. We don't make any expenditure. <coughs> and uh, when it comes to that uh, payment of contractors, before we, we, we even award contracts, before His Excellency awards any contract, we make sure that we have those points available. We have those points. And where we don't have them, we make for beaching. We Every month we fund that, that area, that contract. We are often an account for it and we Fund it every month, so that is why you can see all our projects. We have a lot of projects now. We often a lot in the airport. You know, we have the market here in Namatu. We have the uh, trailer parks in Patuskum. We have uh, the housing that we are going to commence any moment. So all this thing we have, we make a adequate provision for them. And, uh, 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 they are going to be executed. Going to be made. We don't have problem for that. Okay, what about uh, in the ministry, the Ministry of Finance? Uh, you work with um, people, civil servants here. What do you do to ensure that, yes, these people understand that vision um, that His Excellency Governor May Malabuni has for the state? And these people are also helping and supporting to achieve all of this. The staffs of this ministry are very, very supportive. And, uh, you know, they are all aware, they are all informed. In fact, they knew it. This is the practice here. So they knew it, the, 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 the policies of this administration, they knew it. We sat with them, we talked on several occasions, and uh, they know our direction, they know where we are going exactly, mm -hmm. and uh, they are supporting us. In terms of, we've talked on uh, that uh, revenue, okay. you know, we are introducing, almost we have introduced this TSA, the Treasury okay. the single Singles Account, account yeah. where all this revenue generating MDS mm -hmm. will come together. Mm. You know, we'll put them in one place. We have this one program that uh, uh, we link to, with, that is the state uh, mm. uh, integrated uh, financial management and information yeah. system, SIPMIS. Mm. So, you know, we are putting them together there. That was a system that uh, will bring all the MDS together. Mm. You know, we, we'll be here, we are monitoring them, we are seeing what is going on. Mm. So, the revenue base. Uh, is going to be you know, enhanced through that means very, very well mm. because all the daily you know, uh, revenues that are going to be paid will be paid through that uh, TSA. Mm. We, we have that account right now mm -hmm. and uh, we have only some technical issues with SIPMIS and uh, it has been corrected. Last week I was in Abuja and uh, even today I will be there just to, you know, to see that we have uh, uh, achieved this uh, SIPMIS issue and everything was put in place and uh, uh, the, the, the revenue issue was taken off fully. Tell us more about um, the revenues and also how these have been able to help pay salaries and fund other projects within the state. Sir. Yeah. As I was saying, through this SIPMIS now we are trying to, we are almost introducing now, that one would definitely help for us generate a lot of funds. Mm. So funds that are not coming to the government will now be coming. Mm. You know, because that one is, is not that you go to the ministry and take cash or, you know, it's automatic. When you mm. fail as an individual or when you fail your registration in the university as a student, it will automatically fall into the TSA account. Mm. So it comes here automatically. It's a lot of money, but uh, it's not coming to the state. So right now, is going to come mm. and uh, is going to be utilized mm. for the development of this state. That was the intention of His Excellency, the Executive Governor, al Malabani. So we have been working around the clock, you can see, he has been roaming around to see how we can uh, get some support you know, for, for us to, 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 to complement this, uh, uh, this federal government allocation and uh, the, the revenue, low level of revenue we have. Mm. So we are doing a lot of things. Excellency is doing quite a lot of things. 
And uh, there are quite a number of things that uh, maybe I don't want to learn here, but they are coming. Yeah, of course. We are definitely going to get them. Mm -hmm. We are going to get a lot of uh, helping hands and support uh, to enable, enable or execute all these projects we have mm. at hand. Let's, let's give a projection. Let's say in the next uh, two years, what should the people expect from the government in terms of financial management? And uh, in the next two years, because really they will be see a very strong uh, Ministry of Finance with a very strong financial base that will support even stronger projects than these ones we are doing. Mm. Right, because, really, because what we are footing now, you know, is for the future, is for the next two, three years you are talking. Mm. Because in those two years, we are okay now, we are stable, but we are going to get more stabilized in two years, I'm sure yeah. we are going to get more funds. We, are, uh, we will often of more projects, yeah. and uh, His Excellency will be doing wonderful things in two years to come. Well, we'll, we'll wait. Okay, we'll wait yeah. to see all of that, and we wish you all the best as you. Uh, you continue in this stride of uh, improving the finances of yeah. uh, UB State. There you have it, the Commissioner for Finance in UB State, Honorable Musa Mustafa telling us all that there is to know about financial management and even making projections uh, for the state government on the program Impact UB. Thank you very much for your time on the program. Sir. Thank you. I yeah, welcome you very very best. Best. And that's our package this week. Until next week, when we come your way again with fresh news and updates from the Pride of the Sahel, the program has been Impact UB. And my name is Femi Akonde. See you next time.